Um, I think it's time to start. So uh, my name is Marco Newman. I am an information scientist and director and founder of Konar, a semantic technology company based in New York City. Today, I'm going to talk about Apache Jena GeoSparkle. Now, um, Jena is a semantic web framework uh, to represent and process data on the web. GeoSparkle is an extension to the semantic web, and the GeoSparkle model is an extension to the Apache Jena project. The GeoSparkle uh, subject is an advanced topic, and if you are new to RDF or the semantic web, I highly recommend you to visit the um, Jenna project page to learn more about the semantic web and RDF before viewing this presentation. Now, a little bit of history um, to uh, spatial support in uh, Jenna. Um, in 2003, I introduced a spatial filter to um, the query language that was called RDQL in the Jena project. And what we did is uh, we took a query, extracted the spatial features from uh, a spatial index and sorted the candidate set for um, either direct display or further evaluation in the geometry. Um, evaluation and then whether or not we had an intersection or interaction, some spatial relationship between geometric features, um, uh, we would then forward that to the query result set, which then would be pushed to the Jena RDQL um, query processor. So that was the, the first uh, uh, application that we had uh, to. Uh, you know, work with spatial data in, in the Jena project. Then in uh, 2007, we actually introduced uh, so-called uh, um, magic predicates or property functions uh, that we could use within the Sparkle uh, query language, which uh, allowed us to query for um, spatial data. Now in 2008, we released a web service and that web service was called GeoSparkle, and that causes uh, some confusion today. Um, so we call it GeoSparkle, but it wasn't the GeoSparkle OGC standard that we refer to here. So that was just a web service that we used to test our geospatial implementation um, uh, in the Jena project. Now, in um, 2012, after some years of works in the standards group, the OGC actually has released the GeoSparkle standard, and that was in 2012. And it took us uh, another seven years uh, to actually um, introduce a GeoSparkle, OGC GeoSparkle compliant module in, uh, in Jena. The reason for that partially is that 90% of the use cases were covered with uh, these um, magic predicates uh, and proximity searches that we were um, that we already had in the geo in the Jena uh, geospatial module. But um, nonetheless, we now have a GeoSparkle uh, compliant module in the Jena project, and I would guess that in the next five year five years we will see actually another major um, update or a new module in the GeoSparkle in the Jena project. Um, now, what is the Apache Jena project? It's actually um, the Apache Jena GeoSparkle module is actually an attempt to implement all the six conformance classes that are mentioned in the OGC GeoSparkle Implementation Standard 2012. 
Now, we have um, six components. We have core, we have the topology vocabulary, we have the geometry extension, we have the geometry topology extension, an RDF as entailment regime and a query rewriting extension. Don't be worried. Um, you don't have to um, know about all of these or, um, you know, of all these uh, components to make use of GeoSparkle in, um, in the Apache Gena project or in Sparkle. It is just the, the full set of modules that is mentioned in the OGC Geospatial um, standard. Now, let's start with the core. The core is really the, the basic uh, vocabulary in the geospatial standard. It just defines a um, spatial object class, as you can see, I hope, uh, in this in the slides, which is an um, which is a spatial object that represents uh, everything that has a spatial component to it or a spatial representation. Now, the second uh, class is a feature, which is a subclass of a geospatial object. Keep in mind, feature here is a conceptual um, class. It doesn't have any um, geometry um, representation attached to it. Now, um, and that is it. That's the core of the GeoSparkle uh, OGC standard. In, um, in, in the next module, the GeoSparkle OGC standard introduces a topology vocabulary. Now that's the heart, that's the meat kind of uh, the specification. It specifies the um, topological spatial relations of um, these features in, in the data set and provides a vocabulary for that in Jenna. Now in uh, Jenna or in, in general for any application that implements the OGC GeoSparkle um, standard. Now we're having uh, three families of topological relationship support in uh, Jenna, which is the simple feature the Egenhofer and the uh, uh, RCC8. All of these three uh, families uh, are implemented in, in the uh, Apache GeoSparkle uh, module currently. And they are very basic, um, simple um, relationships that can exist between two um, features. Uh, in the vocabulary, um, let me quickly go through them here. So for the simple feature, which by the way, was already implemented in SQL in 2003, when we started to uh, um, implement spatial features in, in Jenna. Um, so we have the relationship equals, so two uh, features are equal um, and we have a vocabulary URI for that as well and uh, specified in the GeoSparkle standard and the domain and range for that is a spatial object. Um, the last section also gives you the intersection matrix pattern for uh, this relationship, which is something we come back to later in one of the examples. Uh, we have disjoint, intersects, touches, within, contains, overlaps, and crosses. So these are all uh, relationships that can exist between two spatial features in the data set. Now, the next family would be the Egenhofer um, topological relationship, which is quite similar to the simple features. Um, it has just, um, you know, again, um, the basic relationships uh, such as equals, disjoint, meet, overlap, covers, covered by, inside, and contains. As you can see here, it doesn't have intersects, but which is, uh, um, if it's, um, you know, that can be replaced by another relationship. So there are minor differences between these uh, families. 
And the third one is the regional um, region connection calculus um, family, which gives us uh, the relation between two spatial features, which can be either disconnect, they can be uh, externally connected. This is the second uh, one in the first row. Then we have the tangential proper part, uh, the third one. The fourth one is the tangential proper part inverse. The fourth one is um, partially overlapping. And the next one is equal. So two spatial features are equal if they exactly cover each other. Um, and then we have the tangential um, property part inverse relationship and the non-tangential property part inverse relationship in RCC8. Now, this um, uh, is just another table here that uh, lists the relationships again. Um, now we talked about the topological relationship vocabulary. So we provide that vocabulary in uh, Jenna for you to annotate your data and um, build your um, ontology and data set. Now in the next step, we're looking at the uh, geometry extension. So we didn't cover geometries yet, right? So we actually just talked about spatial features um, that do not have a geometry component to it. Now, in the next module, we actually add a geometry extension. As you can imagine, this is a very basic, uh, simple, um, you know, geometry representation. So we're making use of uh, basic components such as points, line strings, and polygons. And they are now also available in uh, the uh, vocabulary. As you can see, I have just... Um, open up the uh, GeoSparkle ontology and it gives you, I hope you can see my ontology editor here. Um, we have the spatial object and we can now see the core uh, components, the spatial object in the feature. And then we see a third one, which is actually um, distinct from a feature, which is the geometry. And in the geometry, we can find uh, the basic geometric uh, Types here for surface, polygon, and point, and they can now be used within our data set to annotate our, our data. The GeoSparkle um, module takes um, two types of geometry representations. Let me just go back to my slides. And these are well-known text format and the GML data format. Both of them can be used within the GeoSparkle module to load geometry features into your data set. Now, we have the geometry extension. Now we can also apply the geometry uh, topology extension to these, so a vocabulary that applies to the geometric features. Um, I'm just mentioning some here for the simple features. Um, so these are the functions that we can use uh, now We um, on the geometry features. We can apply them to all types of uh, geometry features, such as point literals, uh, polygons, etc. Okay. Um, in the, the next component, which apparently is not um, necessarily implemented by many um, GeoSparkle providers, which is the RDFs entailment regime. Um, if you are new to the semantic web, it basically means that you can add uh, implicit RDF, you can create new data from existing data that is currently not in the data set. And we can now uh, reason over the data set with our uh, GeoSparkle vocabulary. And Jenna has a perfectly sound um, uh, implementation of RDFS reasoning. So that is a component that we already have in, in Jenna and that we apply to the GeoSparkle um, vocabulary. Now, um, the last module in uh, the uh, GeoSparkle standard is the query rewriting extension. 
now which allows you to again take uh, apply rules to um, to create uh, new information so in the standard there is an example mentioned so take a subject that has a default geometry and that geometry has a serialization which is either either wkt or gml and you can uh, now uh, take another object which has a default geometry, which has also a serialization, uh, which is object uh, literal. And now we can filter um, this uh, data set where the, where the geometry extension contains uh, function allows us to uh, test the two geometric features and create new data. So once you enable the inference um, property on the uh, GeoSparkle um, implementation, the system will automatically infer that the subject um, contains another object if they have an exact uh, corresponding uh, geometry uh, relationship. So if they are exactly the same, we will create a new assertion in the data set. So that's done automatically. Uh, once you have inference and in, uh, inference in enabled in uh, um, in Jenna, and that should uh, should conclude the six components. Now um, there are some additional features actually that uh, the Apache GeoSparker model introduces that go. Uh, that go beyond the standard. Uh, I, I think what really uh, makes this a very valuable contribution to the Jenna project is the fact that we're making use of the Apache spatial information system, which allows us to convert between spatial reference systems um, um, that are out there and not just the basic one that is mentioned by WGS84. Um, we have uh, additional functions such as uh, convert, we can convert. Uh, from uh, data points into um, uh, GeoSparkle um, representations such as uh, points. Um, and um, we have things such as, you know, we have a, an awful lot of uh, new functions that can be used with uh, the GeoSparkle module. Um, let me just uh, have a quick look at, now, if you're really new to, um, to this um, Jenna uh, project uh, and GeoSparkle. I have just um, I created this actually this presentation initially it was the idea to do a coding uh, example, but with this online um, you know presentation, it's probably not uh, doable actually to do this uh, you know in time the 30 minutes that we have. So when you create your um, Java project, Make sure to uh, create the dependencies uh, for um, in the Jenna libraries, obviously the basic libraries, and uh, also the dependencies to uh, the GeoSparkle uh, modules. And of course, if you want to make use of the spatial information system features, then you will also have to um, add the dependencies. I think it's required now to add the dependencies to uh, the spatial information system. Um, and once you've created your Maven project, you can go ahead and code your GeoSparkle um, project. Uh, I hope you can see the code here uh, in, in uh, Eclipse. Uh, we just set up the GeoSparkle configuration here, in this case with an in-memory um, index, which basically registers all the property functions and filter functions to uh, ARC and your Sparkle processor. In the next step, we create a standard Jenna model, um, which is the default model, then load some data into uh, our model. And once we have some data in the model, we can uh, wrap our Jenna model into the spatial uh, index and create a data set which can now be queried with the GeoSparkle extensions. So you can make use of all the property functions and filter functions in Sparkle. So we call that now, this, this is our GeoSparkle 
In this case, we uh, we just define uh, two um, prefixes, uh, geo and spatial, and then we select a subject, a subject that has uh, a spatial um, a relationship nearby to a latitude 51.8850 and a distance of 100 kilometers. We um, wrap that query string into the query factory. Uh, once uh, we have the query object, we can now execute the query object with uh, on the data set and we get our result set which is in our case, because we did uh, load the geo names data set, we get two results. So uh, now let's have a graphical representation here. Um, is, is basically uh, I created a um, spatial nearby query uh, for, uh, I took the Russell square as the center and then said that uh, in the range, uh, give me all the airports or give me all the uh, data sets in the data set that are in range. And then uh, it gives me uh, two um, results, which is Danstead uh, uh, and Gatwick. Obviously one is missing. I can simply add more data to the data set. Uh, Heathrow was missing. I can now um, create uh, a new uh, assertion or uh, new data and add that into my GeoSparkle uh, server dynamically and I can now uh, add and retrieve um, the new data as well. Now, uh, let's go to something interesting. We do some geometry feature evaluation. Um, let's assume uh, you take your favorite GIS um, application uh, and you can uh, now vectorize uh, your data. I did an example here by vectorizing uh, the Denver airport, uh, which is uh, here hopefully displayed in your screen. I can then export the, uh, the, the geometry as a well-known text into my turtle file. Um, and now I also uh, create a spatial uh, representation of an airplane that I would like to test in uh, uh, its topological relationship with the airport. Um, it, and this is just the basic query. I bind two of these objects in the query. So the first one is the Denver International Airport shape. The second one is the airplane, which is, which is in the example outside the airport. And I can now filter the function uh, below here in the last line, I ask, does the Denver International Airport shape contains the uh, flight uh, SWA 1560, um, yes or no? And I would report false. Uh, in the next uh, test, I would try to see if I can test for an intersection. And now in this example, I have moved the airplane uh, into the shape, not covered it, but into the shape. I can now test again. I define two polygons. One is the airport, one is the intersecting airplane. I can now actually use the relate function, which gives me the intersection matrix option here. So I can now ask, is there any interaction between these two shapes? And uh, the GeoSparkle module would report that this is indeed the case. Now the last one is a repeat of the first query. Now the airplane is inside uh, the airport and is uh, again a repeat of the first query. I can ask a filter function here. Does the shape contain the um, airplane which is now inside and would report true? Okay, very good. Um, in the next one, we do uh, go to the next uh, element in the GeoSparkle uh, release, we actually have a full-blown GeoSparkle server that comes with uh, the new uh, release. So you can download or build your own um, uh, GeoSparkle um, Fuseki server. You can uh, um, start your server with either a, a data file or a TDB database and uh, run, uh, now you can now publish your own GeoSparkle data 
uh, from your own server. Now, once you uh, started the server, we can now um, put some data into it. Uh, there is a, a tool that comes with the GeoSparkle server, which is uh, a Ruby tool called Sput. Um, here we can load dynamically data into the uh, Fuseki server. I believe the Sput actually replaces the data set. I uh, initially thought it actually adds data to the server, but I believe in the current implementation it actually replaces the data that's in the uh, Fuseki um, instance. Now, once you have your data in the server, you can query it, uh, you can um, perform simple uh, GeoSparkle queries here. I'm asking to give me the GeoLAT and GeoLong, um, the name and the country code for uh, the data set. Um, we can also uh, explore the data set because these are URI enabled um, uh, data sets so we can test and take a look at uh, these results. Um, and in the next step, we are actually looking at the, a, a product that integrates the GeoSparkle um, module already in a commercial product, which is the top grade EDG uh, tool. Um, here we are executing the Sparkle query on the top. We get a, a result set for um, for uh, our query, and we can actually now uh, print the uh, result set on a map. As you can see here, I have selected all the data points that have a feature code hotel and a country code uh, filter for Germany. So here we have uh, now a visual representation. We can now make this query more interesting. We can um, now add a spatial feature to um, our data set here. In this case, I'm using the QGIS uh, 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 tool to vectorize data. Um, I'm vectorizing here uh, the second largest river in Europe, which is the River Rhine, um, which is uh, now here uh, seen in a simple representation here. This is a line string representation um, in, um, in the JS tool, I export that and then insert the data into my uh, Fuseki server. As you can see, that's a simple insert statement. I take a subject Ryan um, and give it a representation as a well-known text format line string, and and then um, also type it as a geo a well-known text literal. Okay, now I can insert that into my data set in addition to my uh, GeoNames data set. And um, I'm using a simple curl um, and here uh, to update this data into my Fuseki server. Once the data is in my um, Fuseki server, I can query it. Um, I'm now extending the query here with some GeoSparkle functions. So first I convert the latitude and longitude uh, WGS84 um, uh, data points, which are not part of the GeoSparkle standard into um, a um, WKT point representation, which is uh, uh, recommended by the, um, or which is used by the GeoSparkle standard. And I can apply now the spatial function nearby to a geometric object, which is um, which is the which are all the data points in my data set, and compare that with my vectorized um, representation of the river system. I can now ask um, to give it a distance, so give me everything that has a distance of one kilometer, and I can also specify a unit in uh, the last um, column here, which is kilometers. So I can um, look them up. There are a number of different units available in the GeoSparkle um, project. And I can execute that now. I get uh, my result set and can also display that in my screen. And I can see that in my spatial query, I only receive hotels that are in proximity uh, to the River Rhine uh, in my data set. Okay, I think uh, that concludes my um, presentation. I would like to um, 
mention uh, the support um, and two projects that we make heavy use of in the GeoSparkle uh, project, which is, the, which is the Java topology uh, suite, uh, JTS, which we use to do all the topological relationship evaluations. And of course, the Apache Spatial Information System, which I believe will also be used or presented today later on in a session. Um, and um, and is uh, a very uh, comprehensive set of uh, spatial reference systems that uh, can be used as part of the GeoSparkle um, module. Okay, with that, if you need, uh, if you want to find out more about the Jenna project, please visit the jennaapache.org uh, website. Uh, there's also uh, documentation available about the GeoSparkle um, system. Um, if you would like to ask questions directly, please join the Apache Jena user group um, uh, by subscribing to the Apache Jena uh, mailing list. Please get in touch with me if you have any further questions. You can find me on Twitter, um, Neumarks. And uh, with that, I think we are done. And Thank you very much. Questions? I hope you can hear me. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, if there are no further questions, I think we are out of time, right? Or do we have maybe Claude, if you uh, thank you. If you want to join quickly the audio. Uh, I'm trying there. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I think um, I think we have a little bit more time, but it doesn't sound like there are any questions. There's yeah, you, you had, uh, I think you had a question yesterday about uh, uh, support for 2D or 3D. So we're currently supporting 2D. Obviously we can uh, represent 3D data, but the spatial evaluation is on the 2D geometric features. Um, so that is something, there are also some bugs. Uh, you can help us, you know, to uh, find uh, some of these bugs in, in the project. I just found some in the preparation for this uh, uh, session today. Uh, it's not possible to load data and create a TDB database at the same time. And you, can, you can't also uh, use the combination of a TDB database instance and, um, and inferencing that's currently not possible. You can only do that uh, with for, from file-based uh, data loads. I see there's a question 3D. Yeah, I think as I mentioned, 3D is definitely something that could be of interest in the future, but that would then also depend on the supporting evaluation, uh, the geometry evaluation uh, support. So we would have to introduce a whole new component uh, for 3D evaluations. That does mean that you can't uh, annotate your 3D data. So you can use latitude, longitude, and height information, for example, in your spatial. Um... How do we compare to other triple stores? I think um, we are quite well positioned in the Jenna project by actually supporting all the six GeoSparkle uh, OGC components. Uh, many of the other uh, systems do support some uh, spatial functions, uh, but uh, GeoSpark is currently one of the few that actually supports all of them. I can't speak to the specific implementation uh, of GraphDB or uh, other databases. But, uh, from what I've seen is they usually implement some proximity search. And since this is a predicate um, function, uh, this is a simple predicate function, we, we can hook in, in actually any kind of spatial evaluation here for further evaluation. So um, it's not limited to uh, the um, implementation that we currently use. In the previous implementation, we used Lucene spatial for, so for an external um, spatial index. 
with the new uh, um, GeoSpark implementation, we're actually having an in-memory representation, which um, has some benefits. We need to look at the evaluation and scalability of that. I haven't really looked at that in deep uh, in detail, but that would be interesting. Uh, the benefit currently is that you don't have to update the station. It's dynamically updated. Once you insert data into your data store, it will be readily available for spatial evaluation. Okay, I think um, there are no, uh, do you work on all Yeah, well, there is actually a new working group um, by the OGC. There is a new GeoSparkle working group, which looks at the next evolution of um, the GeoSparkle standard. So it's a perfect time to join that discussion. It takes a much wider approach. It talks about all sorts of uh, aspects that might not be directly related to our current implementation. But there is definitely work on uh, on the next phase of GeoSparkle. We might actually, it might be called actually something else in the future, but um, definitely we will participate uh -oh. in the discussion as well. Looks like Marco locked up there. <laughs> oh, or is that me? So can we work uh, with stream and moving objects? I think at the moment we do have these manual updates of the uh, of the. Am I back again? It may have been me. Um, you okay. were there for a moment, but yeah, you're there. Okay, Andy says looks fine. Um, yeah, no, I can't speak to that at the moment. I don't think that we have uh, dynamic uh, streams in GeoSpark at the moment. Okay, well, it's. I think we're perfectly in time, right? So it's uh, um, we're almost two more minutes ready for the thank you. Um, Mahitab, um, please get in touch with me directly if you have any other questions. And see you in the next session. Maybe I see you somewhere else today. Um, yeah, we, um, so the, we do have the, the Slack session? channel. We have the Slack channel for uh, ApacheCon Jenna uh, Slack channel if you want to jump over there and ask questions or uh, there are some more talks uh, later, later so today. The whole Jenna track? When is the next uh, Jenna session? Uh, that, that one's mine, and I don't remember. <laughs> it's, okay. It's in several yeah. hours. You don't want to think about it. It's huh? this evening, my time. That's what I remember. Yeah. So, so there are, I think, three or four more presentations yeah. in the Jenna track. Uh, there's also the spatial presentation later on. And um, something I'd like to check out, the uh, Apache SIS uh, 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 implementation. And yeah, no, so far so good. I think it's quite a quite an interesting experience, this ApacheCon. And it works better than I have expected. You know, I like the um yeah. okay. Okay. Well, so thank everybody we... for attending. And um we'll see you all later. Thank you for joining us. Bye. See you later. Bye.